you saw Atlas, knees buckling, arms trembling, but still trying to hold up the world with the last of his strength, what would you tell him to do? The great oak tree had stood on a hill over the Hudson. It had stood there for hundreds of years, and he thought it would always stand there. One night, lightning struck the oak tree. It lay broken in half, and he looked into its trunk as into the mouth of a black tunnel. The trunk was only an empty shell. Its heart had rotted away long ago. There was nothing inside just a thin gray dust that was being dispersed by the whim of the faintest wind. The living power had gone, and the shape it left had not been able to stand without it. His shock came when he stood very quietly, looking into the black hole of the trunk. It was an immense betrayal. The more terrible because he could not grasp what it was that had been betrayed. It was not himself, he knew, nor his trust. It was something You have else. heard it said that this is an age of moral crisis. You have cried that man's sins are destroying the world, and you have cursed human nature for its unwillingness to practice the virtues you demanded. Since virtue to you consists of sacrifice, you have sacrificed justice to mercy. You have sacrificed wealth to need. You have sacrificed self-esteem to self-denial. You have sacrificed happiness to duty. You have destroyed all that which you held to be evil and achieved all that which you held to be good. Why then do you shrink in horror from the sight of the world around you? That world is not the product of your sins. It is the product and the image of your virtues. You have fought for it, you have dreamed of it, you have wished it, and I, I am the man who has granted you your wish. In 1957, novelist Ayn Rand published her last novel. She called it Atlas Shrugged. The setting was America, in an apocalyptic and not so distant future. Rand said it was the day after tomorrow, and it was a warning. If Rand was here today, she would point to almost anything that's going on in government right now and say, I told you so. The novel is so predictive of what's going on today. Regulation breeds regulation. Controls breed controls. Government will grow, freedoms will shrink. And that has all come true. A devastated economy caused by government intervention, leading to more and more and more government intervention, which makes it worse and worse and worse. They go after if your stock goes up, your stock goes down, your stock goes sideways, you know, no matter what happens, they're going after you. And the ones that pay is everyone in society. We have uh, unfortunately moved very much in the wrong direction, predicted in Atlas Drug. A society based on collectivism, a uh, society where individual rights are really under, a, an, under attack. It seems like you're replaying Atlas Shrugged uh, as you're uh, reading the newspaper. It was astounding to me. I mean, she just understood way ahead of her time what it was all going to lead to. Moral decay, intellectual decay, economic decay. Hey, there's a book that predicted that, you know, 50 years ago. America in the late 1940s and through the 50s was enjoying one of the most peaceful and prosperous periods in our history. Yet Rand had detected a fundamental change in America's direction that, if continued, would lead the most prosperous nation on Earth into exactly the kind of bleak dystopia depicted in Atlas Shrugged. For many readers, this idea was puzzling. The world of Atlas Shrugged was nothing like the real America. Or was it? If 
you saw Atlas, knees buckling, arms trembling, but still trying to hold up the world with the last of his strength, what would you tell him to do?